Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You got Tommy and Randy here. Today, we're going to be doing a study of over obelisks. And a lot of these we all may recognize. Uh, some of them are older. There's a lot of information about the obelisk, where they came from, and you know where the Bible talks about it and what they mean. But first, we're going to start off with the Ten Commandments, and then we'll get back into the article on the obelisk. So Exodus chapter 20, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now, Randy, real quick, I do want to say this is pretty interesting. Uh, the Hebrew word for name is Shem. And if you do a triple click on that, you'll see that name can also mean your character right here. So, the Ten Commandments, we've said several times, is the character of God, right? So if we claim to be Christian, we claim to follow these commandments, and we claim to have the character of God, but we're actually out lying or killing or stealing or committing adultery, then we're taking his name in vain, right? Right. There might be a little bit of a relationship problem there with the Savior. Yes. Uh, with the Savior uh, on there. All right. In the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. All right. So let's get into the study and make it a little bigger here. So, uh, among the ancient nations, not only were statues of the gods and goddesses in human form made, other objects with a hidden or mystery meaning, such as obelisks, were a part of heathen worship. So we're going to get into the, the second. Well, I mean, this basically gets into all the commandments, too, but, the, you know, primarily the second commandment. Tommy, isn't it amazing, too, uh, that when you're talking about a hidden or mystery meaning, is that they say that the doctrine of the Trinity is a mystery? Oh, yes. Go ahead. All right. Uh, uh, Diodorus spoke of an obelisk 130 feet high that was erected by Queen Samaritans of ba or in Babylon. The Bible mentions an obelisk type image approximately nine feet in breadth and 90 feet high. The people fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up in Babylon. This is in Daniel chapter three, verses one through seven. Now, whenever it does give a Bible verse, we do want to stop and go and look in the bible because if it don't take you back to your bible then there's no point in even looking into it so we're going to get into daniel chapter three and nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three uh, score cubits which is 60 cubits and the breadth uh thereof six cubits he set up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon then nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the province or the, the princes the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces 
to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now that kind of sounds like uh, in the end, like the uh, getting like the new world order together and they're getting even the sheriffs, they're getting the police ready. And if anyone goes against my statutes, we're going to kill them. It's kind of like in a, uh, a climate change uh, conference meeting. <laughs> yes. You know, Tommy, another important point too uh, to look at is the image they didn't say it was an image of nebuchadnezzar no uh that's something we need to emphasize here it says an image of gold it didn't yep. say an image of nebuchadnezzar here uh so we need to be very careful i believe it was an obelisk tommy and well as we go through the study they'll bring that out a little bit well yeah look at the dimensions i yeah. mean you cannot have a man that is six cubits wide and 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 60 cubits tall it would topple <laughs> over and wouldn't it have been natural, Tommy, in the scripture said Nebuchadnezzar made his own image of gold? It doesn't say that in the Bible. Yeah. It says um, it's an image of gold. Yes. And we'll go down to verse 7. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together into the de uh, dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. It still says the image that yeah. Nebuchadnezzar, it doesn't, doesn't say. say yeah. it, wouldn't that have been a great place, Tommy, to say it was oh, yeah. the image, the exact image of Nebuchadnezzar? It doesn't mm -hmm. say that. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then and herald cried aloud. To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, uh, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same or shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet flute harp sackbut psaltery and all kinds of music all the people the nations and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up so that covers that uh, but it was in egypt an early stronghold of the mystery religion that the use of the obelisk was known best many of these obelisks are still in egypt but some have been removed to other nations one is in central park in new york wow Another in London, while others were transported to Rome. Now, do you want to take a few paragraphs here? Yeah. You know, uh, Tommy, it's amazing is that this image originated in Babylon. Mm -hmm. It didn't originate in Egypt. And the Babylon that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in in Daniel, uh, that's why I believe that it was an obelisk, mm -hmm. which is an honor as we go down through this which is in honor of uh, the pagan trinity. Yes. You know, people forget that. We look at the days, Sunday and Saturday, but Sunday is in honor of the trinity, Tommy. It's not in honor of Sunday. It's in honor of the most holy pagan trinity. Yes. Pretty interesting. So uh, before we get going on this next verse, you wouldn't you agree that before Babylon, you either chose to go with God or you chose to go against him? But wouldn't it make perfect sense that, satan he still wanted to get the people that chose to go with god so he decided that he would use false worship that started in babylon to deceive people that tried to go with god and see that goes against um uh, entirely against well all the commandments but thou shalt not make any graven image or bow down to it mm -hmm. uh, which it's amazing that we still have these images today so i'll read on originally the obelisk was associated with sun worship the ancients have rejected the knowledge of the true creator. Seeing that the sun gave life to plants and to man, looked, looked upon the sun as a god, the great life giver. Uh, to them, upright objects such as the obelisk had also a sexual significance. Uh, remember, thou shall not uh, commit adultery, Tommy. Well, it goes a little deeper than just the physical, the spiritual mm -hmm. uh, in there. Uh, realizing that through sexual union life was produced, the phallus was considered along with the sun a symbol of life. These were the beliefs represented by the obelisk, which we know that from Samaria's Tammuz and Nimrod is that that, that phallus uh, represented uh, the false sun. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not, and we're talking S-O-N, not S-U-N, the false pagan trinity which is now being promoted which is the worship of the sun god 
Amen. Whether it's a physical image, Tommy, or it's a literal image in the mind. Uh, the word images in the Bible translated from several different Hebrew, the largest upright phallus, phallus of the sun in the world huh, is the George Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. That doesn't seem very surprising, does it, Tommy? No. The capital city of the United States of America, its dimensions at its base is 555.5 feet wide by 55.5 feet long and a height of 555 feet high. Guess what the sum total is, Tommy? Uh, when you add these dimension, when you when you add uh, those three dimensions, six, 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 six. And what does Revelation say about that, Tommy? Is, is that here is wisdom. Yep. It's a number of a man. And where did the Trinity come from? Yeah. Man, it didn't come from the Bible. No. It came from uh, the traditions of men. Yeah. And wouldn't you say that with the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up, the image was six cubits wide by 60 cubits tall so wouldn't you say that they're kind of copying off of nebuchadnezzar's image here 55 and a half by 55 and a half by 555 yeah they uh, uh to make a to label an image with entire gold and obelisk would make more sense than an image of a man do you understand it yes. would be quicker mm -hmm. uh, could be seen by many uh and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh knew that uh that it was pagan, it was an abomination to the Lord thy God. Amen. Yes. The word images in the Bible is translated from several different Hebrew words. One of these words, mas masba, meaning standing images or obelisk. It that's in first Kings chapter 14, verse 23, second Kings chapter 18, verse 4. Uh, and 2 Kings 23, 14, Jeremiah 43, 14, Micah 5, 13. Another word is Haman, which means sun images, image dedicated to the sun obelisk in Isaiah 17, 8 and Isaiah 27, 9. You want me to go on, Tommy? Uh, do you want me to go through a couple of those yeah. verses? I'd like to see the Jeremiah, Tommy. Okay. Jeremiah 43, 13 and Isaiah 17, 8. And right. the oh. radio listening audiences, you'll you'll have this fully to go through on your own uh, to look at uh, uh, and to put in your treasure chest. Uh, Forty three thirteen, you said uh, he shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh that is in the land of Egypt and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall burn with fire or shall he burn with fire. Wow. And then what other one did you want? uh let's see tommy we had micah uh, 5 13 yeah micah 5 13 we do that one thy graven images also will i cut off and thy standing images out of the midst of thee and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands wow wow and just so look standing images here yep notice uh if you micah look down here images masba yeah you know in five uh in 514 and i will pluck up thy groves uh out of the midst oh, of thee over here yeah out right of the here. midst of thee so will i destroy thy cities uh where do some of the presidents of the united states go it's called bohemian grove oh yeah in indiana and if you look at a lot of your street names you'll have groves on your street names uh, on your street names, it's pretty amazing is that uh, these groves are in honor of pagan gods. Amen. Mm -hmm. They do rituals there. Yeah. All uh, right. Okay. Taught me the word. Uh, let's see. In order for the obelisk to carry out their intended symbolism, they were placed upright or erect. Thus, they pointed up toward the sun. As a symbol of the phallus, the erect position also had an obvious significance. Bearing this in mind, it is interesting to notice that when divine judgment was pronounced upon this false worship. Sorry, I missed you up there. Yeah. Uh, this false worship. Yeah, right this here. false worship. It was said. It was that these images or obelisk shall not stand up, but would be cast down. And we read that in Isaiah 27, nine. You want to go there, Tommy? Yeah, let me, I'm going to make this a little bigger. So that way it's quicker to go from screen to screen. And okay. I'm also going to make this a little bigger. Okay. So Isaiah 27, nine, Let's see what Isaiah has to say. 
I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Go ahead, Tommy. Okay. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. And this is all the fruit to take away his sin. When he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in sunder, the groves and images shall not stand up. Wow. Notice there's groves there and images. So they go into the groves where the images <laughs> are placed uh, to worship. They'll be destroyed, Tommy. Mm -hmm. uh, Along with the cities. Uh, in order. Okay. We... Okay, I'll just read one more. I think you, I could start off right here if you All want. All right, go ahead. When the Israelite mixed heathen worship into their religion in the days of Ezekiel, they erected an image of jealousy in the entry of the temple. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 5, and I'll go there real quick. And this says... Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Wow. So these are God's people mm -hmm. worshiping uh, a pagan uh, phallic image, or I, I believe it was the Trinity. They weren't worshiping the true God and his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, this image was probably an obelisk, the symbol of the phallus, for as Schofield says, they were uh, given over to phallic cults. Placing an obelisk at the entrance of heathen temple was apparently not an uncommon pro practice at that time. One stood at the entrance of the temple of Tum, or Tum, and another in front of the temple of Hethar, the abode of Horus, or Tammuz. Tammuz has several names. He has many names. Interestingly enough, there is also an obelisk at the front of St. Peter's in Rome. Hmm. As the photograph shows on the left, so that's over here. Here's the obelisk. And it's getting ready to get into the history of this obelisk, too. It's pretty interesting. The one in Rome is a mere copy of an Egyptian obelisk. It is the very same obelisk that stood in Egypt in ancient times. Even more interesting, there is one positioned in front of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. When the mystery religion came to Rome in the sun worship days, not only were the obelisks made and erected at Rome, but obelisks of Egypt or obelisks of Egypt at great expense were hauled there and erected by the emperors. Cal uh, Caligula in 37 to 41 AD had the obelisks now at the Vatican brought from Heliopolis, Egypt, to the circus on the Vatican Hill, where now stands Saint or, or uh, yeah, Saint Worship in the olden days. In the Old Testament, these obelisks that stood there are mentioned as the images of Beth Shemesh. And I believe we read that earlier in Jeremiah 43, 13. So the very same obelisk that once stood at the ancient temple, which was the center of Egyptian sun worship, now stands before the mother church and Roman Catholicism. Tommy, I'd just like to add too, what is the base of where all Roman doctrine is built upon? Uh, the trinity the trinity they mm -hmm. they say that uh, which goes back to somewhere sun worship mm -hmm. our phallic worship is in honor of the most holy trinity pagan yeah. trinity i yeah. don't want to call it holy trinity pagan trinity go ahead Tom. this seems like more than a mere coincidence a and dear reader it is no mere coincidence that the largest obelisk in the world stands before the capital in washington dc in the usa mm. The red grand obelisk of the Vatican it's, it, it's, it is itself 83 feet high, or 132 feet with its foundation, and weighs 320 tons. In 1586, in order to center it in front of the church in St. Peter's Square, it was moved to its present location by order of Pope Sixtus V. Of course, moving this heavy obelisk, especially in those days, was very, a very difficult task. Many movers refused to attempt the feat, especially since the Pope had attached the death penalty if the obelisk was dropped and broken. Tommy, another one uh, uh, which I'd like to add. Notice that they attached the death penalty. Tommy, what law today is on the books that has an attached death penalty to it? The Breckenridge Law. And what is the Breckenridge Law? What is the death penalty for doing what? Denying the Trinity. Denying the Trinity. Isn't that amazing how that goes together perfectly? Yes. Finally, a man by the name of Dementia Fontana accepted the responsibility with 45 winches, 160 horses, and a crew of 800 workmen. The task of moving began. 
The day was September 10th, 1586. Multitudes crowded the extensive square. While the obelisk was being moved, the crowd, upon penalty of death, was required to remain silent. So no sneezing, no nothing, or else you'd be killed. That looks like a non-union company, doesn't it, Tom? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I <don't... laughs> yeah, no HR you know, there. Yeah, there, no. there, there was a non-union company <laughs> on the penalty of death. Yeah. I thought I'd throw that in. I know no that write -ups, no unions nothing. don't uh, conglomerate, but it looks like a non-union company yeah. there. But um, after the obelisk was successfully erected, there was the sound of hundreds of bells ringing, the roar of cannons and loud cheers of the multitude. The Egyptian idol was dedicated to the cross. Mm. The cross was on top of the obelisk, is supposed to contain a piece from the original cross. Mass was celebrated, and the Pope pronounced a blessing on the workmen and horses. And the Pope cannot bless anybody. I imagine, Tommy, they felt pretty free once they got it <laughs> yeah. set up. You know what I mean? They didn't have to worry about him pronouncing a blessing. They knew they weren't going to be killed. I wonder oh, yeah. what they were paid, Tommy. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I would have asked for an extra wage or two. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know really if go ahead. All right. The drawing to the left shows the pattern of St. Peter's and the circular court in front of it. At the center of the court stands the obelisk. This court is bordered by 248 uh, Doric columns, a style that was commonly, commonly used in the design of sun worship temples. So all this right here. Looks like a giant key, doesn't it, Tom? Yes, it does. You know. And, and it's funny that... Um, Later on, and I think the study will get into it, they actually had them move it a little bit because they wanted it in an exact spot because whenever the sun comes up in the east, it casts a shadow on the door of the church. So it's the mother church is becoming impregnated and by the, the false sun, uh, S-O-N, the false sun. Amen. Yep. So you go back to the pagan false trinity. Yep. So like the obelisk, sun worship columns were sometimes regarded as mystery forms of the phallus. In the vestibule of the sun worship temple of the goddess at Her Heropolis, an inscription reads, uh, it's Latin, I didn't dedicated these philae here, my stepmother. So whatever. So even as uh, Roman Catholic leaders borrowed other ideas from sun worship, it has it is no surprise that building elaborate and expensive temples also became the custom. Worldly-minded leaders thought they should build a temple of greater splendor than those of the old Roman religion. And you know, Tom, uh, Tom, go ahead. All right, I'll, and I'll continue on, and I'll go all the way down to this one, then you could take over. Uh, we know that God directed his people under the rulership of Solomon to build a temple in the Old Testament and chose to put his presence there. But in the New Testament, it is clear that the Holy Spirit no longer dwells in temples made with hands. And you can see this in Acts chapter 17, verse 24. And I'll go there real quick. Verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Well, that's a powerful one. Neither is worship with man's hand. Go ahead, man. Oh, that's sorry. a powerful one. No, Tommy, that's a powerful one. Yep. Uh, now God dwells in his people, his true church by the spirit, says Paul. Ye are the temple of God. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. And this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I won't go there because he quoted so he, it right here. Yeah, he doesn't dwell in phallic, does he, Tommy? No. You know, no. granite statues. Well, what house crosses. could we build that he would want to live in? Yeah. He wants to dwell in us, not buildings. All right. Understanding this grand truth, the early church filled the spirit, never went forth to build temples of stone and steel. They went forth to preach the gospel. Their time was not spent in financial drives or oppressive pledges in order to build a fancier building than a temple down the street. Yeah. You can read that again, Tommy, because yeah, I think it's a, a very powerful, powerful statement there. Yep. Uh, so understanding this grand truth, the early church filled with the spirit. So this is talking about the apostles after the day and of Pentecost. What spirit are they filled with, Tommy? The Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Father and the Son. And the Son, not a third being. No. Amen. They never went forth to build temples of stone and steel. Mm. They went forth to preach the gospel. Their time was not spent in financial drives and oppressive pledges in order to build a fancier building than a temple down the street. According to Halley's Bible handbook, we do not have any record of a church building as such being built prior to 222 to 220 or 235 AD. Wow. 
So they were the church. They were going out spreading the message. They didn't. I mean, they probably met outside for a lot of it or someone's house. And they weren't following a pagan trinity. No. You know. Uh, This is not to suggest it is wrong to have church buildings. Probably the reason they were not built earlier was because the first Christians and during persecution were not allowed to own a title to property. Tommy, I want to stop there just for one second. It says they were not allowed to own title and property. The New World Order, uh, they do not want you to have title or property. It's for the common good of man. Everybody owns everything. So you see that being expressed today uh, by our political, some of our political leaders in socialism and communism Mm -hmm. uh, and so forth, Tommy. So there's nothing new under the sun, is there, Tommy? No. Uh, But had they been allowed this privilege... We feel certain that such buildings would have been built simply, not for outward show. They would not have tried to compete with the expensive styling of the heathen temples of splendor like the Temple of Diana at Ephesus or the Pantheon of Rome. Tommy, where's another uh, pantheon at? Uh, uh, Parthenon in, yeah. Greek, in Greece. Well, we're at here in the United States. Oh, today. in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. So if you get a chance you know, to go in there, what is it? Is it the goddess Diana that's in the inside of there, Tommy? uh no, no. there's a huge woman goddess it's yeah. uh now i can't think of it it's uh and we'll come back to it later we'll we'll look it up and come back to it later but uh, yeah very interesting i don't think i'd be standing too close to that do you it's a goddess of the city isn't it to protect the city yeah the protector of cities yeah. i forgot her name but yeah yeah pagan so, god right yeah. there in the united states we mm-hmm. have built you know <clears throat> okay But when the church came to political power and wealth under the reign of Constantine, Mm. a pattern for building elaborate and expensive church buildings was set and has continued to this day. The idea has become so implanted in the minds of people that the word church to most people means a building. But in its biblical use, the word refers to an assembly or group of people who are themselves the temple of the Holy Spirit Mm. as strength or go ahead. Go ahead, and we want to emphasize too the we do believe in the Holy Spirit, but we know not who the Holy Spirit is, not what it is, and it's not a third God. Yes, as strange as it may sound, a church building could be totally destroyed, and yet the actual church, the people, remain. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to take on from there? We're right down here at the majority. Okay. The majority of expensive church buildings that have been built over the centuries have featured a tower. Wow, Tommy. Each generation of church builders has copied the former generation, probably never questioning the origin of the idea. Some towers have cost fortunes to build. They have added no spiritual value. Jesus, of course, never built such structures when he was on earth, nor did he give any instructions for them to be built after his departure. Wow, Tommy. Notice the many towers in the Cathedral of Cologne to the right, and you can issue that. How then did this tower tradition in church architecture begin in the Cathedral of Cologne in Germany? The use of towers is also carried out in Christendom, Catholic, and Protestant. The tower of the great uh, Cathedral of Cologne rises 550 feet above the street, while that of the Cathedral of Ulm, um, Germany, is 528 feet high. Well, they're pretty tall towers, aren't they, Tom? Yep. Even small chapels often have a tower of some kind. It is a tradition that is seldom questioned, and I recommend that you question this. Uh, uh, I moved the screen on you a bit. You're up here to if. If the reader would permit us a certain liberty at this point, we would suggest a theory which points back to Babylon. Wow. Isn't that amazing, Tommy, is that we're being called out of Babylon? Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, we will all remember the Tower of Babel. The people said, let us make brick. Let us build a city and a tower, tower, which top may reach unto heaven. That's in Genesis chapter 11, verse 3 and verse 41. The expression unto heaven is no doubt a figure of speech from great height, as was also the case when cities, when walls that reached up to heaven are mentioned in Deuteronomy 128. We are not to suppose that these Babel builders intended to build clear up into the heaven of God's throne. Instead, there is a sufficient evidence to show that the tower commonly called a ziggurat was connected with their religion with sun worship, which we know sun worship is pagan trinity worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Uh, of all the lofty mounts of Babylon, the towering ziggurat must certainly have been one of the most spectacular constructions of its time. Rising majestically above its huge encircling wall of a thousand towers around the vast square, chambers were set aside for pilgrims as well as for priests who looked after the ziggurat. Coldaway called the collection of the buildings the Vatican of Babylon. Hmm. Right That's in front of our face. Yeah, right in front of our face. And the reason why me and Tommy, uh, we're not saying that this is a salvational issue, but in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said the first thing he had told his apostles, and if you want to go there, Tommy, and this is the reason why we're giving this, because uh, a lot of you say, well, what does this have to do with salvation? We're really not, not much, but it has to do with deception, Tommy. You know, deception. I'll let you get there. Uh, you want to go back up a little bit? Yeah, I think it's back up, back up. Yeah, back up and to take there you right go here. take heed to yeah. come in so jesus was the disciples asked him uh, uh questions about the sign of his coming and the destruction of jerusalem it was a two-part thing and notice in matthew 24 24 and it says and jesus answered this is the first thing that jesus said to his apostles after asking that question you can read it in context of chapter 24 and jesus answered and said to them take he heed that no man deceive you Take heed that no man. And where do these ziggurats and towers come from, Tom? Babylon. And man. Yeah, man. Mankind. So uh, he's telling you, take heed that no man. And that's the reason why we're bringing this out. Uh, if you don't know it, is that no man can deceive you by any means. And remember, uh, the Bible talks about if to deceive the very elect. It didn't say it would. Mm -hmm. And you are the very elect to learn this, not to be deceived by any man. Amen? Mm -hmm. Through Christ's spirit and the Father's spirit. Amen? Yes. Okay, Tommy. You might have to go down to where, where did I, I think stop? you're right here. It has it, been suggested. All right. It has been suggested that one of the meanings of the names of the goddess Ashtar are Samarius. Remember, Samarius was the wife of Nimrod, right, Tommy? Mm -hmm. Written as Ashtart means the woman that made towers. Now, Tommy... Uh, something I'd like to add to that. Who do a certain uh, denomination or church, who do they reverence? Uh, Mary. Mary, yeah. Samar Samaramese, Mary, Samaramese. The woman, yeah, the woman that made towers. Mm -hmm. The goddess Sibyl, which has been identified with Samarius, was known as a tower-bearing goddess. This verse says Ovid, that erected towers and cities was represented, here we get to this, was represented with a tower-like crown over her head, as was also Diana. Wow, listen to this. In the symbolism of the Catholic Church, a tower is emblematic of the Virgin Mary. Wow. Uh, does all this somehow connect uh, to our audience? Yes, it all connects back to pagan trinity sun worship or ball worship, Tommy. Yeah, and I thought of the name, the goddess, it was, it's Athena. That she's, yeah, Athena. She's the one that's in the Parthenon. In, Na in, Parthenon, yeah. in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, she's the goddess of wisdom and the protector of cities. Now, uh, that is kind of blasphemous because, see, Jesus is the wisdom of God. Amen. So now to have the goddess of wisdom to be erected and the protector of cities, and the Bible says several times that God's going to destroy the cities. So I don't think Athena is any match for God, but that's just what I think. But no, anyway. and Athena doesn't protect cities. God, the Father, and his son, Jesus Christ do. Yep. All right. And you and me take over at some? Yeah, did we skip a little bit, Tommy? Or no, I, you got right here. Uh, I'll come next back to some worship. Some ancient towers. Yeah, so then we're up here. Uh, some ancient towers, as we all know, were built for military purposes for watchtowers. But many of the towers that were built in the Babylonian Empire were exclusively religious towers connected with the temple. In those times, a stranger entering a Babylonian city would have no difficulty lo locating its temple. We are told... For high above the flat-roofed houses, its tower could be seen. The Catholic Encyclopedia says it is a striking fact that most Babylonian cities possessed a temple tower. And tell me, uh, 
you could go through your cities now and see if there's temple towers, couldn't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's no difference than back then. And not only, not only building structures too, you can even look at companies' logos and they hide, they hide symbolism in that. We have the pyramid structure on the dollar bill Mm -hmm. with the all seeing eye, which wasn't in the original dollar bill, by the way, uh, uh, marked on there. But uh, yeah, very interesting is that this mystery uh, pagan mystery religion is all around us yeah and then also nasa the the snake right. tongue but anyway it is possible that babylon as with other things we have mentioned could have been the source for religious towers we recall that it was while they were building the huge tower of babel that the dispersion began it is certainly not impossible that as men migrated to various lands they took the idea of tower with or of a tower with them Though these towers have developed into different forms in different countries, yet the towers in one form or another remain. So Buddha has a tower. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different gods have towers, don't they, Tom? Yes. So towers have long been an established part of the religion of the Chinese. The pagoda, linked with the word goddess at Nankin, showed uh, to uh, the left are three pagodas of Dali Yanon, and I guess that means it should have said to the right, but it said to the left, but anyway. Uh, in the Hindu religion, scattered above the large temple enclosures are great pagodas or towers, rising high above the surrounding country, everywhere they could be seen by the people, and thus their devotion to their idolatrous worship was increased. Many of these pagodas are several hundred feet high and are covered with sculptures representing scenes in the lives of the gods of the temple or eminent saints among well which who who worship saints today the catholic church Amen. so um uh, among and the who, what does the ahead. bible say about saints tommy who are this biblically just from the bible what is a saint tommy those that keep the commandments of god by how by the faith of jesus christ here mm-hmm. is the patience of the saints revelation 14 yes. 12 and there's still not says to be patience mm-hmm. uh patience because uh, the fruition of this pagan worship will be shown for all to see on this yep. earth before it's and just back. real quick while while we're on that topic let's just do a quick word search on saints and see what it says okay there's 96 verses i'm not going to go through all of them but i mean if you want uh, go through and see what saints is, is see if they're if we're supposed to worship saints and erect buildings and images to them but anyway so among the muslims though in a different form can be seen the towers of their religion the above picture shows the numerous towers called menorats or mecca towers of the same style were used in the famous church of saint sophia at constantinople above left so i'm guessing that's this one right there oh yeah that's a huge mosque and i think at one time that used to be a christian church of constantine Mm -hmm. and then the muslims took over in turkey Mm -hmm. with that and now it's a muslim when the ottoman uh, empire defeated yeah. yeah wow And then uh, at the top of many church towers, a spire often points to the sky. Several writers link, and perhaps not without some justification, the steeples and spires with the ancient obelisk. There is evidence, says one, to show that the spires of our churches owe their existence to the uprights or obelisks outside the temples of former ages. Another says there are still in existence today remarkable specimens of original phallic symbols, steeples on the churches, and obelisks, all show the influence of our phallus worshiping sun worship ancestors and we should add not just to the sun worship but to the pagan doctrine of the trinity sun worship amen because sunday is an honor of the most holy or the most pagan holy it's not holy the most pagan trinity we don't want to let that disconnect there tommy Mm -hmm. you know uh tommy uh, one more thing I'd like to uh, add is Revelation chapter 13. Can we go okay. to scripture to uh, to look at this? There's a ton in here that I think you'll find very interesting that through God's spirit, you'll uh, be able to connect. But in Revelation 13, one, and I'm going to, I'm going to split this up and let, I'm going to read seven and let you read. Let's look to just look at this chapter in the okay. Bible. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of 
blasphemy. Tell me what's blasphemy. Uh, claiming the, the Bible gives two definitions for blasphemy. It's claiming to be God and also uh, being a man claiming to be God and also claiming to forgive sin. So who does that on earth today, Tommy? Oh, the Catholic Church. Okay, so we can identify that just from the word blasphemy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And guess who gave him his power? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Who claims to have great authority on earth, Tommy? The Pope. And who has his who has power? The Pope. Because the, the presidents, they go visit the Pope. The Pope doesn't mm -hmm. come and visit the president. No. Well, there's a problem there. And where's his seat at, Tommy? Where's his seat at? In Rome, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. what is in the seat? The phallic. Yes. Which we just talked about. And also, you know, you know how the United States wants to get in everybody's business and help them with their governments and all that stuff. Well, why don't we uh go over and and um try to help the vatican not molest so many children i mean why where's our war on uh, on uh you know save our children right you know uh where do they get their power from the dragon mm -hmm. and what do we know the dragon to be in the bible satan. pagan and pa papal rome pagan rome and then also satan mm -hmm. right yes so where do they get their great power? It doesn't come from God. Mm -hmm. It comes from the dragon. But anyway, and I saw as one of its hands as it was wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now, that wound is healing uh, in climate change, uh, Tommy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they want all the world to take a day off uh, to drop climate change. And what is that day, Tommy? Is it Monday? No, it's it Tuesday. Sunday. It's Sunday, which is in honor of the most holy pagan trinity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and all the world wondered after the beast. We're getting there, aren't we, Tommy? Oh, all yes. the world wondering after the beast, the new world order. Mm -hmm. That's what Joe Biden and his clan uh, want to bring in. Amen, Tommy. Yes. We can see it taking place, and the Bible is giving you this reference. Anyway, and they worship the dragon. Now, notice this. And they worship the dragon which gave power into the beast. Now there's worship there. Mm -hmm. So we think of worship, you know, devil worship. Well, that's easy to see, but what about religion that is worshiping the dragon? That's deceptive. Is the pagan Trinity, does it promote, is that false worship? And who are they worshiping in that third being? Yeah. Satan. Satan. Is false. Yeah. Satan, that spirit of Satan. That's why they have the big churches and the phallic in the middle, amen, mm -hmm. and the money offerings going in to build bigger churches, that's not from God, that's from man, mm -hmm. uh, or the dragon, well, anyway, they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and notice this, and they worship the beast, saying, who is likened to the beast, who is able to make war with him, hmm, it's very interesting, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, Tommy, who claims to forgive sins on earth, yeah, the Pope. Wow, that's pretty blasphemous, isn't it? Who claims to be the power of God on earth? Pope. And what is their doctrine and all their other pagans or doctrine are built, built upon? The Trinity. The Trinity. And power was given unto him to continue. Now, we're, we're not going to go uh, to continue 40 in two months. Revelation 13, 6, and I'm going to let you take over after 13, 9. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. And what's the first commandment? Thou shall not have any other gods before me. Mm -hmm. So a trinity having three gods, co-eternal, co-existent, right? Mm -hmm. That would be blasphemy, wouldn't it? There would be three gods, yet they say it's all one. That's a state of confusion, yes. like Babylon. Yes. To blasphemy his name. I believe the trinity fit that, mm -hmm. pagan trinity. His tabernacle, wow. And where does he tabernacle? Us. Yes. Within us. Not in a building. And them that dwell in heaven. Who claims to be the priest here on earth? Yeah, the Pope. But where is our heavenly high priest? In heaven. And who is it? Jesus. And he's our comforter. Yes. Amen. And it was given him to make war with the saints. And notice, and he, they wouldn't go through 1260 years of the dark ages, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds 
and tongues and nations. That's happening in front of us in uh, this false uh, climate change, uh, uh, forget it. Yes. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now notice here's worship again, Tom. So this has to do with worship. Yes. And what is the fourth commandment? Who does that worship? The creator, not a pagan trinity, right? Yes. Amen. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb. Now notice we want to be written in the book of life of the lamb. Who's the lamb, Jesus? Yes. Amen. He's the son of God. He's not a metaphorical son of God. Amen. Uh, uh, meaning uh, slain from the foundation of the world. Wow. The foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. I'll let you go ahead and take it from there, Tommy. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Wow. Wow. And Tommy, what were many killed in the dark ages for? Were they killed for denying, uh, <clears throat> denying uh, Sunday worship or were they killed for denying the Trinity? The Trinity. The Trinity. And the death decree has always been on the Trinity. On the Trinity. Uh, and here's one thing that's interesting is when it says he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay. I've, I've talked about like the, in the end time, you know, uh, the tribulation stuff with a lot of people and a lot of people are wanting to arm up, get their guns, get their ammo and all that stuff. And I mean, your guns and your bullets and everything that that's going to be like, that's, you're going to be your sword. Okay. But your sword needs to be the word of God. Amen. That's how we get yeah. armed through Christ. And I think a lot of people are so afraid that they're like, well, I would rather be shot to death than to be persecuted. So they're going to they're gonna get loaded up with their guns and everything, and they're going to fight back just because they would rather die by a gun than die by having their head chopped off or burnt at the stake or whatever. Right. But, you know, Tommy, a, an interesting point on that, too, is that you're not going to die. You're going to die for a worship principle. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you're either going to love the truth or not have a love for the truth yes and of course go ahead i'll let you go ahead but well, i just i thought that was interesting and he yeah. that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity hmm. anyway uh and be and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon now Tom, who's this talking about that's the united states of america and, and if you don't believe that look at what you're going through now mm -hmm. with these false pandemics yes and, and viruses. Uh, uh, and another thing, if you don't believe that, then look at the phallic study that we just did. You have two images. Mm -hmm. You have a phallic in Washington, D.C., yes, and you have one at the Vatican, and the Vatican was there first. Mm -hmm. This second beast, notice it says first and second. Yes. This second beast, and I'm going to let you go on with that. They both are mere images of one another. Yes. Go ahead, Tom. Well, and another thing, like up here in verse one, where it said the beast of the sea. Now, uh, the the beast of the sea, sea represents what? People. A lot of people. Okay, so whenever this beast was coming up over in Europe, there was a lot of people over there. there they had a large population. Well, over down here, you have the beast of the earth, which is right here. So if the sea represents a lot of people, what would the earth represent? Not a lot. Not a lot of people. So whenever at this time, after the, the 42 months or the 1260 years, and we were starting to move this way over and inhabit the United States before it was the United States, I would say it was pretty desolate over here, wouldn't you? Yeah. So yeah, this has to, the only, the only kingdom or the beast, which the beast is a king or a kingdom that was coming up as the beast of the sea was getting its, its head wound was the United States. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And we're not going to go through the breakdown because there's a lot in what we're reading. What we're trying to connect is, is these phallics, mm -hmm. false worship, and showing you that the book of Revelation is exposing that. Yes. Uh, and notice it had two horns like a lamb, a Christian nation, mm -hmm. right? Yes. A nation that professes Christianity. Yes. But it, it says like a lamb. It didn't say it was a lamb. Yes. So it's a false Christianity. Mm -hmm. And notice, and, but, and he spake as a what? Dragon. Go ahead. So these two horns like a lamb, this is representing Protestantism, which is leaving the Catholic Church and leaving false doctrine. So this is Protestantism and Republicanism. Okay. And, and like a lamb, it spake as a dragon. Now, this is laws. When it's, something speaks, it's, 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 that's talking about laws going into effect. 
Okay, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, that wound is not fully healed yet, but it's getting there. And how does he cause them to worship the first beast? Climate change and yes. Sunday sacredness, which is in honor of the pagan trinity. Yeah, and, and explain, explain to the listening audience how you got that right here. He causes the earth, causes mm -hmm. the earth. What does cause mean? He Force, makes yes. he makes an enforced law. And if you don't believe that that's not taking place, look at COVID-19 and all the world and enforcing their vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. makes you think that they can't make one more step on climate change? And you're hearing that time and time again on these climate accords. The, the, the climate's been changing since the beginning of time. God's in control of the climate, not man. Mm -hmm. But they're using that to bring in sun worship which pronounces the phallic mm -hmm. right which is in honor of the most pagan trinity yes and what is the death decree on yeah denying the trinity denying the trinity it's not on the days yeah go ahead well see right here where he said cause it the earth and then that dwell therein so this saying here this it calls it the earth this is not talking about the people right here it's talking about the people right here and then that dwell therein like randy said this is talking about the earth so this is, it has to be climate yeah, change, climate change, climate the change. Thing. earth. It didn't mm -hmm. say cause the people climate change. Yes. Uh, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And notice it says to worship the first beast. So you must identify who that first beast is. Beast mm -hmm. equals kingdom, Daniel 7, 24, to go in there. That first beast is the papacy. Yes. And if you don't believe that that's not taking place, turn on your television. Mm -hmm. They don't hide it. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven and the and uh, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, uh, or hold on, which had the wound by a sword and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that. The image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Notice it's over worship. Mm -hmm. This is not over a computer system, a vaccine, an ID. It's over worship. And mm -hmm. what commandment deals with worship? All of them do. But what commandment deals with worship? The first four. And <clears throat> what is the pagan trinity? What does that deal with? It deals with worship, but to who? Yeah. The false god and the false day. Yes. Go ahead. Well, and also it, this is this is not saying like an image. This is an image of the beast. So you have to identify who that beast is, and we know that that beast is is the papacy. And, oh, and good point. And notice it says to give life. Mm -hmm. To give life. Well, Sunday sacredness, the climate change bill. They're yeah. giving life to this. Well, and they're given power over yeah. to the papacy to uh, make laws. And notice it's all the earth. Mm -hmm. It's not just the United States. It's all the earth. Yes. Whether you're Muslim, Presbyterian, whatever, Hindu, yes. it's a climate change. Yes. So eventually the United States will give its power over to the papacy to enforce laws so it, that it should both speak and cause that as many as, you know, not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, that word killed there, what law talks about killing that is on the books today the breckenridge bill and if you don't have that uh please uh contact tommy he'll happy to send you that bill for you to read mm -hmm. that's still on the books today yes which means they can enforce it anytime they want it was not done away with but anyways an image so an, an image is not the original so the once you figure out who the beast is and all the the characteristics of the beast then you're going to know that the beast is a church state combo amen and who was christ made in the image of the father mm -hmm. he was not the original god Correct. was first yes but he was but he was begotten by the father he's the express image but mm -hmm. he's not the original because the yes. father's the original he was first yes but there's a false image yes the pagan trinity yeah so uh basically the point i was getting at was in in the end the image is going to be another church state combo that's going to persecute god's true people okay and he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their hand 
or, or in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, this is not a tattoo on your hand or in your forehead. This is talking about uh, now what I believe in your forehead. This is your thought process. You being deceived or you uh, just being tricked in your hand. I believe that that is where you are forced. You're, they've taken you by the hand and forced you to do something like they've held your kids over your head. Say, hey, if you don't do this, we're going to kill your family or anything like that. And what did uh, Joe Biden, what did he do when the first day in his office with his hand? Oh, he wrote laws, signed a bunch. Yeah. Wow. With his right hand. I don't mm -hmm. know if he's a lefty or not. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah. And that no man might buy or sell, say that he is saved he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Notice, Tommy, that there will be somebody <clears throat> that it, it says buy or sell. And what are they trying to do with our currency today? Oh, they're trying to do away with it. Make and it make it electronically. Yes. Amen, Tommy. Isn't that give you, and that's the, all the world, Tommy. That's mm -hmm. not just the United, that's all the world. Uh, what is it? Dodgecoin and Bitcoin yeah. and I know a lot of that's disappearing. Thirty-two mm -hmm. million dollars just suddenly disappears in one day. You yeah. know what I mean? Go ahead, Tom. Well, let's see what Mark is. Okay, and Mark, uh, it's from a, a scratch or etching stamp, badge of servitude, or a sculpture figure, statue, a graven mark. <clears throat> so, did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel? Uh, did they have the mark of the beast? No, no. And I want to see what name is. So name here, character, authority, character. character. So you're only going to be two characters. Well, I'll let you go ahead and read it. Uh, so what is the name of the beast? Well, I mean, it could be a righteous by works. It could be evil. I mean, what is the character? I mean, if you, you there's probably a long list of what the character of the beast is because there's a long list of what the character the of God Trinity? is. Yeah, I mean, it's just... That's not the character of the Bible or Jesus yeah. Christ or the Father. It's error. The name of the beast is error, false worship, uh, righteous by works. I mean, right. tons of it. Or the number of his name. Now, that's a good one. Keep going, Tommy. All right. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is a number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. Now, you know, Tommy, and I, I wanted to stop there on that one, but if you want to go on, you can. No, that's okay. Uh, what are the uh, uh, phallics in dimensions? Yeah, they are... Well, the Washington, D.C. one. Yeah, is, let's just look at Washington six, six, six. because they get power into the first beast, right? Yes. 666. Six, six. Number of man. Yep. Right there in front of your face. Interesting. Anyway. <coughs> All right. You have anything else you want to cover? No, I, I just ask you to uh, please look this. Let no man deceive you by any means. Uh, go over this. Uh, God, let God lead you through his spirit. <clears throat> that uh, these mystery religions are already out here in front of our face and not to be deceived by them, Tommy. Yes, amen. All right, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Take care and God bless.